Good morning. Good morning. We are a church that connects to God and His people, grows in faith and love, and lives through service and sharing, that all may know the love of Jesus. What a blessing it is to gather today in the sanctuary here. And also, what a blessing it is today to gather with you online. Welcome to King of Glory Lutheran Church. Uh, we are coming to you from lovely Providence Forge, Virginia today. Uh, where we come each week as well and so welcome to our worship time a little different if you join us each week today we're at the eight o'clock service and so i'm not going to show you the people because you know it's just eight o'clock in the morning and they're a little bit and i'm only kidding there are people here today and so if we could say a welcome to the people online today welcome welcome great to have you all here today and you joining with us i'm pastor larry mcreynolds i'll be joined today with pastor adam Gray, who will be our liturgist today. May the Lord bless you on this 4th of July Independence Day weekend as we gather. Uh, you'll notice that the service today <clears throat> as well is a little bit different at the beginning. Um, our service will include the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag and also the Christian flag. And we'll also um, have a special call to worship and we'll sing God bless our native land on this Independence Day weekend. I hope you're enjoying the weekend so far. I think um, today may have a little bit of rain, but I think tomorrow is supposed to be okay, I guess, but I'm not sure. Who knows? We're in southeastern Virginia. We never know what the weather is going to be. So a couple of announcements today as we uh, gather together. We had a congregational meeting last week, and uh, uh, thanks to those who were here <clears throat> in the sanctuary and those who joined us online as well. A uh, couple of things just to share with you. We have two new members of the church council, uh, Pam Shala and also Brian Jason have joined uh, as part of our leadership team and we give thanks to the Lord for both of them. We also give thanks to the Lord for the two people who they'll be replacing. Um, Amy McLaughlin has stepped down as our secretary in the in the church council and uh, also Rick Easton has stepped down as president uh, as a member of the council as well and so we thank both Amy and Rick for their uh, many years of serving as council members and in leadership roles as well. We will miss them greatly, um, but they're not going too far right now. Amy and Vic are moving, as many of you know. They're moving next, early next year, um, but uh, Rick is going to become one of our elders. So we're developing an elder um, a team, and so we thank the Lord for the repositioning uh, that will be happening as well. Uh, we also uh, approved the budget uh, for 2002, 2023, 2002, where am I, where am I, 2022 and 2023, and then also um, we uh, unveiled the capital campaign as well as just a sneak peek as uh, what the, the plans are as they are shaping up uh, for the building uh, that we hope to begin to build. Um, a couple of other things, too, are Vacation Bible School, August 1st through August 5th. If you know people, if you have families in your neighborhood, share that news with them. Um, they can go right to our um, website, kognk.org, to register. Um, a VBS team will have its, a meeting on Thursday this week, uh, the 7th, um, at 7 p.m. Um, it'll be about an hour in length, and we're just going to uh, touch base, as we will do uh, as well one more time before Vacation Bible School, Bible School starts. Body and Soul is a, is a, a wonderful organization and um, Melissa Gray um, who is also manning the IT booth today. Womaning, uh, if you will. She's know. womaning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, sorry, sorry. You heard it here, folks. Okay. <laughs> so maybe you might want to say a, a few words, uh, Melissa, about Body and Soul. Sure. Um, so I'm trying to get body and soul going. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm trying to get body and soul going um, in the church. I do have two online classes posted currently at 6 a.m. on Wednesday and Friday. If anyone's interested in that, again, that would be virtual from the comfort of your home. And that's intense fit 360, kind of like a boot camp style. Um, and then I'm offering on Monday evenings here did I say 6.30? You did. Okay. 6.30. Um, uh, um, <laughs> Life 360, which is a toned down version. It will be here. We'll clear these chairs out. Um, you can bring like five pound dumbbells or soup cans or just use your body, whatever. Um, 
but you need to go online and register for my class so you would sign up and subscribe depending on how many classes a week you want to take and, and it'll kind of walk you through the pricing and then once you are a member then you go and find me Melissa Gray and you select my class yay that's good stuff <laughs> this is a great opportunity and a good entry point for the church as well and we thank the Lord for your ministry and, uh, and, and those of us who are part of uh, body and soul will become more fit, right. even. Maybe the two pastors <laughs> should... Uh, <yeah. laughs> he has the very dead look on his face right now. Because <laughs> he he's still stunned. He was thinking, when you mentioned bring the dumbbells with you, we were thinking, I was thinking, maybe he's actually talking about us. I don't know. That's, that's Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, we also, for those of you who are in the sanctuary today, um, the uh, portals of prayer are available for June through September. They're available in the back for the taking as well. Any announcements that you might have today as we gather? Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise today. We thank you for the great blessing that you give us in Christ Jesus of being called as your people in the midst of the world. We thank you on this weekend, especially, Lord, um, for the privilege we have um, of living in a country that is free and uh, a, a country that cherishes liberty. And Father, we ask that you would uh, help us as we, as we look forward to celebrating Independence Day tomorrow, uh, that you would always keep us mindful of the great gift we have to be able to share your son Jesus in the midst of a free country. What a blessing that is. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Peace be with you. Also we rise and we begin our worship today with the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And then we also pledge allegiance to Christ in the Christian flag. I pledge myself to Calvary's cross and Christ for whom it stands and to his service all my days, my head, my heart, my hands. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Happy are the people who serve the God of Jacob. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Let us pray. Loving God, we gather to praise and worship you and to receive you once again as your word comes to us. Bless our gathering and our remembering, our hearing and our speaking, that all honor and glory may be yours. Bless us that we may be a blessing, a blessing to you, to our community, to our nation, and to our world. We ask this in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare we are forgiven of our sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God of all power and might, and giver of all things good, graft into our hearts the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, and nourish us with all the goodness that we may love and serve our neighbors. We ask this in his name, the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Normally, at the 10 o'clock service at this time, we have a children's message, which doesn't appear in our bulletin today, but guess what? We are going to have just a little children's message this morning. I am not Miss Ruth, so any of the kids who are here, um, you know, you're, it's, it's not, it's not Miss Ruth, so you'll have to put up with me. But today I want to think, I want you to think a little bit, and you kids here as well, I want you to think about how we celebrate. How do you celebrate? When you celebrate something, how do you do that? Parties. What? Parties. What else? Food and drink. Food and drink? <laughs> That's right. How do you guys celebrate? Probably can think of lots of things. Maybe you have friends over. Maybe you do a lot of neat things. Maybe you play some games, right? Um, one of the ways we celebrate today in church um, on this special weekend, because it's Independence Day weekend as well, is we have the opportunity to celebrate two things. We celebrate this beautiful country that we're in, this wonderful country, America, the United States of America, and the freedom that we have. And we also celebrate Jesus, who we can worship, who we can proclaim who we can live for freely in the midst of this great country. Some of the ways that we celebrate both of those things is to give honor and praise, right? So we give honor to our country on 4th of July weekend, Independence Day weekend. Maybe you are going, uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe today, to some of the fireworks displays. Um, we had a really good thing. Was it, who, who was it who, Kathy? Who was it who said, was it Adams? Who John said, Adams. John Adams mm -hmm. said that we should celebrate Independence Day, not on the 4th, but on the 2nd of July. You heard it here, okay? <laughs> uh, because Kathy told me, not because she heard it from John Adams himself, <laughs> but um, that that was the day that actually the Constitution was, was ratified, was adopted. And that's kind of a neat thing to, to think about. And so when we gather to celebrate, we can celebrate those events that happen. And we celebrate, too, the fact that Jesus the Christ is our Lord of it all. And we give thanks for that. Some of the visual things that we do to celebrate. Um, can I have Miss Kathy, can you come forward for a second? Ooh. I'm going to embarrass you in front of millions of people. Millions. Okay. <laughs> so Multitudes. So you know, you know, some ways that we celebrate. Why don't you turn around and face the camera oh. here. You'll notice Miss <laughs> Kathy looks like a flag, doesn't she? In fact, if we were to walk over to that flag, she would disappear into it. Okay. And, and the Christian one too. And the Christian one too. You have all the right colors, which is really awesome. And you have, the, you have both flags right there too. Awesome. Even though she didn't meet John Adams personally. Right? Well, you never know. And we also have, we also have in church today, just a beautiful flower arrangement. I know we can't get the camera down here, so I'm going to pick it up. Okay. There we go. And is this not a patriotic looking yes. way to thank the Lord and also to give praise um, and, and thanksgiving for this beautiful country in which we live? And so thank you very much, Danette, for doing this. You're welcome. This was one-handed too, right? One-armed yeah. you did this. So well, flowers, flowers are lights. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of our country. We thank you for the blessing of being able to celebrate Independence Day in freedom. And help us, Lord, every single day to cherish that liberty that comes to us from you, from you, Heavenly Father. And so bless our time together today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. We continue now with our first reading. Okay. 
The first lesson this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, beginning at verse 10. Rejoice with Jerusalem, and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse, you shall be carried upon her hip, and bounced upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass, and the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants and he shall show his indignation against his enemies. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <clears throat> the second lesson is from Galatians chapter six. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a, gent a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast you in your flesh. But, but far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For the, neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead, two by two, in every town and place where he himself was about to go. And Jesus said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Go your way, behold, I am sending you out to lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the, and remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages, do not go from the house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. 
Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on the way for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Siren, Sidon, they could have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment of Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted in heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me. And the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like a lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We sing, Christ be my leader. Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A word today from Scripture, the second lesson today. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we um, gathered, as I reflected on these Scripture readings, I was really drawn to that second reading today. Uh, we've been kind of marching through the book of Galatians in a Bible study that we've been doing over the course of the last uh, couple of weeks um, in uh, Verena, which is a, a, a place in uh, Williamsburg, a, uh, a senior adult residence. I meet with about 20 uh, seasoned citizens there, and uh, it, it's really a joy. And, and this scripture, the letter to the Galatians, is just such a a powerful letter on so many on so many fronts. Um, it counters maybe uh, some of the things that that you and I uh, deal with in the course of our own life, in the course of our own journey. Um, our proclivity to, you know, maybe sometimes think a little too highly of ourselves. I'm going to say that 
as a personal confession. Those of us who are marked with collars around our necks, sometimes we think pastors are all that. Well, you know what? We sometimes are all that, okay? And, and all that is not necessarily good because we're sinners like everybody else. You know, it's who we are as humans. You know, we tend to think the world revolves around us. We tend to think that what we do is, is the most important thing, right? Because, and that's, you know, as we see life, as we see all of life's journey, we see that from our perspective. And as I look out, everything revolves around me. But it doesn't. And that's always good for us to be reminded of as we go through life's journey. And, and we see this um, as, as Paul um, I'm going to say deals with the people of Galatia, these new, these new Christians, this new church um, made up of, of mostly folks who um, were not of the Jewish tribe, okay, they were, this is kind of in what is now like northern Turkey, okay, if you can think of that geographically is where, where this was located, and so this was a new group of people who were hearing the gospel and responding to the gospel, and the Holy Spirit was drawing them into faith. But yet there were some people who were false teachers, some people who were trying to persuade them otherwise, that there were other things that were really important, even Christian people, Christian people who were, um, you know, uh, caught up in what they did in life's journey, those who were uh, of the Jewish faith before recognizing Jesus as Messiah. And so there were whole lots of laws and regulations and all of those things that they had to keep ritually that many false teachers during that time were, you know, saying you have to do all those things. All those things are very, very important. And it led to a little bit of boasting. You know, you need to be as good as we are. You might believe in Jesus, but you need to do all of those things. You need to have those entry points, things like circumcision, Things like food rituals, things like all of these things, all of these laws that were put in place, really old covenant laws that were used to show us our need for a savior, um, were now being used uh, in the, even in the church community. So that was a difficult journey for them. And I love how Paul deals with it in this particular text in Galatians. Take a look at it with me. First of all, when Paul's desire is that the Galatians would abide in the gospel that was first preached to them, that were justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, right? As it says in Galatians 3 verse 16, the fruits of the gospel are harmony and concord with each other as they bear one another's fruits and burdens and they fulfill the law of Christ that way as they serve one another. Uh, Paul closes out his letter in the, in the Galatians, urging them to live in love and, and service to each other, just as God commands. But Paul says in this, he says in verse 14, But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me, an eye to the world. He understood the concept of boasting, the concept of, hey, you know, um, I'm pretty good because I do all these neat things. How many of you boast? We all boast. Come on, we all boast. <laughs> My lawn is better than yours, okay? Um, think of all the reasons why we boast. It's because we feel good about ourselves, right? We, we want to boast about it. We want to tell the world about it. And, and it's not all bad in, the, in context. Some of us boast about our children or our grandchildren or our pets. I don't boast in the cats too much, but <laughs> Ruth does. Ruth boasts about them all the time, okay? Um, but our kids and our grandkids, certainly, you know, we take a little bit of pride in that. That's really good. Back in, it's really weird to say, back in the last century when I was younger, <laughs> um, <laughs> I used I belonged to a baseball team um, called the Comets. Comets was a little league team in Floral Park, New York, and uh, yours truly was a member of that team. And 
I was privileged to be on a team with Joey Marengo, with a guy named Keith, whose name I've forgotten his last name, um, and a number of different people from my block, the place where we lived. And we won the championship in Little League in Nassau County. And I still have the trophy. It's about this big. It's pretty awesome. And there's the little, you know, bronze guy with the perfect batting form, you know, it's really good. And we would have that in our house. And as we would, people would come in, they would see the trophy, you know, and, and they would come up to little Larry, who was like 11 years old, and they'd say, wow, you must have been fantastic. What a great player you must be. And of course, I would say, yes. I'm part of that team. It was great. My father, just out of eye shot, who was a real baseball fan, would always be kind of like, um, not so much. <laughs> he didn't really boast about my baseball playing at all. Uh, because you know what? I was not. I was not an Allison Tober. I was not an Allison Tober at all. Um, I was usually the last person to be picked on. I was the quintessential geeky kid who really, you know, dad made you go out to play baseball, and so I did. And I was usually one of the last. Wayne Whitehorn was the last, usually, but I was one of the last <laughs> before Wayne. Um, Wayne was the same guy when we used to play church. He was the guy who was always the congregation, so that we always we had an offering from him. It was pretty awesome. Okay, <laughs> side story right there. It's a little boasting on my part, but there was reason. I could have. I, I found myself boasting when I was that age, and as I reflect on it, I remember being so proud, but also being, hey, you know, I was. I'm part of the comments. There's no reason for me to boast. I just happened to be there. <laughs> I didn't do anything really, really bad. And of course, in the championship game, I actually got a hit too, which was really awesome. That was, you know, I made my parents joy right there for sure. But my boasting was really being a part of that team. It was just great to be a part of that team. Paul the Apostle, when he talks to the Galatians, he reminds them that, you know what? You're part of the church. And there's certain things about being part of that team, God's team, is to recognize the importance and the centrality of the work that has been done for us in Christ Jesus. And he focuses this scripture text on the cross of Christ, right? He says, Bar but far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Now Paul could, you know, he, and he said this in, in other parts of scripture where he actually does a little bit of, um, uh, you know, self-deprecatory boasting, kind of uh, uh, mockingly talking about himself as being, I was the Pharisee's Pharisee, I was the best Jewish person you ever, I kept all the laws, I kept it all perfectly, but yet it's all about Jesus. And that's kind of what he's reminding here. Far be it for me to boast, except in the cross of Christ Jesus, our Lord, because it's the cross that changes everything for us. It's the cross where Jesus died that changes our life, yours and mine, forever. We are not the same because Jesus suffered and died on the cross. And then even more than that, that cross led to Easter Sunday, to Resurrection Day. Because by his death, death could not keep him down. But rather, he was raised from the dead. He became alive for us. And those facts together, the cross, the resurrection, Jesus' death, Jesus rising again, his death killed our sins, brought us to death. And his rising brings us to new life as well. So that now we live a life free, in freedom, 
even better than the freedom of living as part of the United States of America. It's a freedom that will last forever and ever into eternity, a different kind of freedom. Today we gather and we cherish our freedom of living in this country. What a blessing that is. But we recognize that that liberty and that freedom is a gift from God to us. What a blessing it is that God has given us these great gifts. So our boasting becomes not in how much we've accomplished, but how great he is by going to the cross and showing us the way to love, the way to forgive, the way to live for others is what the cross shows us so clearly in Christ Jesus. Paul was denouncing the false teaching of the time. Paul was denouncing the fact that there were false teachers invading and coming into uh, the Galatian church who were looking a lot like Christians, but they were departing from the gospel and instead starting to teach a new gospel, a gospel that was not the true gospel of good news in Christ Jesus. They were trying to facilitate some kind of a good news in their ability to keep the law, their good news and ability to be good. All of those things fail miserably in comparison to the Christ who died on the cross for us. So our foundation is found in Christ Jesus and his cross and his resurrection. That's what made the church alive. That's what brought the church to life. And for that we give the Lord thanks and praise. But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world, right? The world has been crucified to me. The world doesn't understand me anymore. The, the world sometimes wants to put me to death because of my commitment to Jesus who died on the cross for us. And I to the world. The world, this world, no longer the most important thing, Paul says. But rather, the kingdom of God is the most important thing. Being connected to God in Christ Jesus is the most important thing. Being found in him is the most important thing for his life and for our life as well. There's a great text. Um, I know many of you know it, but to me it sums up really where this is coming to. And it actually was in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. And it says this, For I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, now listen to this part, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself. For me, the importance of the cross of Christ it shows us love. It shows us the depth of God's love for you and for me, even on our worst day, when we're not perfect, even while we were sinners. Christ died for you and for me. So you think of your worst sin. You think of the worst thing you've ever accomplished in sin in your life. And you know what? God loved you in Christ Jesus, even in the midst of that. Even before you committed that, he knew you were going to. And he saved you anyway. He rescued you from your own selfishness as you live in faith. So what a blessing it is to know that we have been crucified with Christ, that it's no longer you and me who live, but it's Christ who lives in us. There's a hymn I want to close with, um, just the words to it. And you'll hear, you'll hear the melody of this hymn during communion today. But Stuart Townend penned these beautiful words. Behold a man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that 
held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. And so I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Boasting in the cross of Christ. Boasting in Jesus the Christ, who died for you, that you might live forever. Amen. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, help us in our life's journey to never lose focus. Help us, Lord, never to boast in the things that we think are big accomplishments. Help us to recognize, Lord, that you've drawn us into the beautiful, the most beautiful team the team of your church, your community of faith, the people of God, the new Israel today. And so, Father, help us as we live our lives to boast in your son Jesus, who died on the cross, who rose from the grave, that we might live, and that all people might know that love. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 We rise and confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Pastor, you have any specific people you want to pray for this morning? I think if we can continue to remember Ed Yarrington mm -hmm. in prayer, um, who is uh, Ed um, is in rehab right now after a really serious heart episode. He now mm -hmm. has a, a pacemaker, and uh, but he's he's doing much better. We continue to keep Shannon in prayer as she continues uh, the journey as well. Um, and also, we thank the Lord that the Nets here and uh, feeling pretty frisky. I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, no more falling. No more falling. Okay. We really should address the net and, and Pat Dressler up and, and Angie and did that little walking thing with the flag. <laughs> it would have been <laughs> would have been appropriate today, but we won't do that to you. But Thank you. <laughs> keep all of them in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for, for all people according to their needs. O Lord of the harvest, your son Jesus tells us to pray that you would continue to send laborers in your, your vineyard, that the plentiful harvest may be gathered into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, you sent Jesus to preach your word. And he likewise sent forth the apostles and the 72. Grant us faithful pastors who receive your word and with thanksgiving and deliver it without fear even when wolves threaten to devour them, and who trust that, and trust that in the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have established governments and institutions for good, order and discipline and well-being. Guide and grant wisdom to leaders and citizens. We pray for our president, our governor, our county administrator, and all who hold elected office. Give peace, serenity, security, laws, and honor so that your country, our cities, and our communities may abide in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those who serve in law enforcement and in our communities, especially Sheriff Joe McLaughlin, Deputy Heath Jenkins, and all who serve the New Kent Sheriff's Department. We also pray for first responders, firefighters, EMS workers, doctors, nurses, and medical teams. Protect them each day, Lord, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift to you the men and women who serve in the military, both here and abroad. Bless and sustain them in their families as they serve to protect and defend our great nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we celebrate this Independence Day weekend, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of living in this great country where we have freedom to openly worship you. May we never take that privilege for granted, but always guard it and treasure it. May we not live in apathy toward you, but live in awe of your love and forgiveness freely poured out for us. Allow your light to shine brightly on us as we serve and love our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those we love, our families and friends who are in need of prayer today. Hear their names as we bring them before you in this place. Lord, you know the needs of all these people. We pray that you would bring them healing, strength, comfort, hope, and peace as you meet them in their need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Father, help us to fix our eyes on the Son Jesus each day. As your kingdom draws near, teach each of us to boast only in the cross and of our Lord Jesus Christ, rejoicing that you have saved us by your gracious love May your spirit lead us to live our lives in thanksgiving to you as we share this hope, the joy and the peace that is ours in him. Help us to share the good news that all who know him will love him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we sing together hymn 860, no, 685, hymn 685.
we rise. As we gather around the Lord's table, we remember with thanksgiving in our hearts what the Lord has given to us, and we commit our offerings to his blessings. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for providing for all of our needs in this life. And we thank you, Lord, as a church community for the faithfulness of those who have given and support your work here. We uh, give those offerings, Lord, to you, and we commit them, Lord, to you, that you would use them, Lord, by working through us, um, that more and more people might know the love of your son, Jesus. So, Father, on this day, accept our grateful praises to you. Accept, Lord, these gifts, gifts of our time, our talents, our treasures, our very lives, that all people would know the love of your son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 As God's people of faith, we come around this table to receive the Lord in, with, and under the bread and the wine that are served in this sacred meal, this sacrament. And so we pray that the Lord, as he comes to us today, would nourish us and that he would sustain us with this precious gift for life's journey ahead. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection he opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and to drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is the cup of my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you're drinking in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. O Lord Jesus, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, 
your ascension into heaven and your coming for the final judgment. And so remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Amen.
Amen. Amen. We rise and we sing together the post communion canticle. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. <clears throat> Jesus, your true presence has come to each of us in your word and sacrament, and we give you thanks and praise. We pray that we might go out into the world as your people, your church, proclaiming your love. Strengthen us as your people, connected to you by your spirit, that we may grow in faith and love to share the good news of Jesus as we live in him. Amen. As God's people, we proclaim now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. May it be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord once again today. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 We sing together, God of our fathers. And it's, it's not in our hymnal, by the way. Which, so I hope I remember how it goes. Ha, ha, ha. and she's going to kill me, but it is my beautiful bride's birthday today. Today, yes. 30 again. 30 again. Is it a big consequential birthday? 30 again is the safest thing I'll say today. Okay. <laughs> but it's one year before 50. <laughs> oh, we got a birthday. to love and serve the Lord, that all may know the love of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed Sunday and a wonderful Fourth of July weekend.
Same to you.